This ocean scene was modeled, rendered, and animated all within Form Z. Each object represents a different modeling or animation feature, and there is a separate demo movie for each item. In this presentation, we shall build an anchor and chain by using just basic primitive type objects and then filleting and blending them all together to create the one single solid anchor. The chain is comprised of a single link which we multi-copy and then we bend those links along a path. We begin by using just the primitive tools. We'll pull those out and uh, maybe for the shank use a cone, extrude it to the height that we want, and then of course we can use the edit controls tool on any type of object, for example this cone, by simply moving the top or bottom radius. For the eye ring on top, I'll use a torus shape for that. Uh, just sort of type in the radius values that we need and uh, move that into position. And then using the fillet tool, what we can do is sort of fillet any two objects together. You can see a nice smooth transition is then blended together to create the one single solid object. For the crossbar, what I'll do is, uh, once again, create a cone, and I'll edit the top radius to the desired radius that we need. And then I'll just simply uh, move that part into position. And uh, the crossbar has a little ball at the end, so what I'll do is just put a little sphere right on the end. And then once again, I'll go to the fillet tool, just simply click on those two objects to create a nice transitional fillet to combine those together. Let's mirror and copy this object over to the other side. And then I'll use the fillet tool again to uh, fillet both of the crossbar members to the main shank of the anchor. Now down at the bottom we'll go ahead and create the arm of the anchor. And you can see with the primitive tools I can modify some of the parameters such as making it uh, an elliptical type cone uh, and a surface object. And if I choose the uh, closure option to be none, uh, then you can see that instead of a solid cone, uh, it's an actual surface object. Uh, for the fluke of the arm, uh, we can do a paraboloid. Once again, just uh, create the radiuses that we want and extrude that to uh, the shape that we need. And then maybe move into a front view, and I'll move that right on the end of the arm, then I'll leave a little gap there because what I'm going to do now uh, is use the blend tool and I can blend any two types of objects. In this case I'll just click on the surfaces uh, or the faces of both those objects and it'll create a nice smooth transitional blend. And I have the stitch option on so it'll also stitch those pieces together to create one single object. And then using the radial bend tool I can just simply grab that object and bend it to the desired radius that I want. I can also either do it graphically or type in a number. And then I'll simply take that part and move that into position. And now I want to mirror and copy that over to the other side for the arm on the opposite side of the anchor. And there's a little crown at the bottom of the anchor, so we'll just put a little sphere for that and move that up into position. And then we'll just uh, go back to our fillet tool once again and just simply uh, click on the shank and the sphere at the bottom and it'll fillet those pieces together. Uh, do the same thing with the arm and the shank and uh, we'll do the same thing with the other arm on the other side. So what we end up with is one single solid object that is all smoothly blended together into one object. For the chain, what we'll do is uh, first rotate the anchor so it's laying on the bottom of the ocean floor. So I'll rotate it uh, right on the bottom here. And for the chain, uh, first thing I'll do is create a path uh, for the chain to follow. So I'll just use the spline drawing tool. And in the side view, I can sort of uh, approximate where I want that uh, spline curve to be. Extend it a little further. And I'll go back into my 3D view here, and you can see I can now take that spline curve, and once again, using the Edit Controls tool, I'll just sort of modify that shape to the desired path that I want. Next, what we'll need to do is uh, create the actual chain links themselves. And so I'll do that by, once again, going to the Drawing Tools. I'll start with the Vector Line tool, and switch over to the Arc tool. And you can uh, 
go back to the vector line tool and you can see in form Z that you can actually create mixed composite type curves uh, in a continuous drawing session without having to create separate pieces and join those together later. Uh, let's create a circle and then using the sweep tool what I'm going to do is take that uh, profile and sweep it along that path. So there's a single uh, chain link there so what we'll do is uh, make a copy of that and from that we need to uh, probably rotate that so the links fit together properly so in the side view I'll just rotate that 90 degrees all right and there's two links and now what I'll do is create multiple links I'll just grab both of those objects and uh, multi copy that uh, type in the number that I want how about 12 so we'll make 12 more copies and there's all of our links for the chain now what I'm going to do is grab all of these objects and using the join tool what I can do is join those together as one single object and then using the bend along curve tool I can take that object and have it bend along that curve and you can see that the geometry will then uh, bend accordingly along that spline curve now at this point uh, we're still in interactive shaded mode uh, we have a gray plastic there maybe we want to give it more of a realistic surface style texture uh, we can use an image map of course that's one way of creating surface styles uh, we'll put a mirror type reflection on the surface and we'll also put a bump map on there too so we can actually use that same image and based on the intensity of those grayscale uh, pixels in that image we can create a bumpy surface now this is an interactive shaded right here but if we do a render zone rendering uh, then we can take advantage of uh, both the mirror type reflectivity on the surface and the uh, bumpy texture that's applied on there too without having to model all those bumps on that surface and here's the final animated movie of our anchor and chain all modeled rendered and animated in form Z